Welcome back to the channel, folks. Today, I'm going to be um, giving you guys my opinion on the 2020 Lexus RX350. So let's start off with the question, why Lexus RX350, right? So my, fa my, my parents my, were looking for a vehicle, uh, just, just a vehicle for themselves just to get around, uh, nothing crazy, nothing special. And, and they were looking for an SUV. And previously before this car, we also had another, uh, we had a 2015 Lexus RX350. And obviously we had no issues with that car. So that's why we decided to go with uh, this vehicle, right? Now this vehicle, uh, this Lexus RX350 is the um, RX350 um, F Sport uh, Package 3. So, which means uh, this comes with all the bells and whistles of the RX350 line, right? So, when we bought this, we had an option of either going with a 2019 model, like a pre-owned 2019 model, or going with the brand new 2020. We bought this in October of uh, 2020. And um, back then, the pandemic was just, I mean, the pandemic started around uh, March, April-ish. And the the car market like hadn't gone like the car market wasn't as bad as it got like afterwards right so there are still cars in in, uh, in dealerships it's just no one's like really going out to buy a car so i mean if anyone was looking for uh looking to get a really good deal there was potentially like you know you could potentially get a really good deal on like uh vehicles back then so this is exactly the opportunity i i i, I took when um, since I worked in the dealership business as well, I knew how how the dealerships were suffering. So I mean, I, I wanted to take advantage of that. I, I took advantage of that. I went to a Lexus dealership. They gave me a really good price on the on our trade-in, which was the 2015, and they also really gave, gave us a really good price on this current model, uh, 2020 model, right? So again, let's let's circle back to why the Lexus. So in this price range, um, like you know we couldn't we didn't really have too much of an option like we wanted to have like a medium size suv not like three row we didn't want a three row pass um, suv we just wanted like a medium size so we wanted a medium size suv that was going to be good enough for to daily drive and like you know that wasn't going to give us any issues in the long run right um, so that's why it's a Lexus. Like we could have gone with an Acura, uh, we could have gone with Infinity. Again, I work for Nissan, so, and I saw quite a few Infinities while I was working in Nissans, and it wasn't like you know it wasn't any anything revolutionary, and it was just like um, the interior, the, the infotainment was just like a, was just like trickle down like from higher Nissan, like like top of the line Nissans. So it wasn't like anything that was standing out for me for Nissans or Acuras and stuff like that. So that's why it's uh, it's 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 the Lexus RX350 for us. Again, like people can have their I can have their debate. If you guys like uh, if you guys if a lot of people wanted me to go with uh, X5, the X5 was um, is a solid choice. But like if I wanted to spec it out to how I wanted to wanted uh, this car to be specced out, like like with all the bells and whistles this was gonna it's just gonna run me way over like around hundred thousand canadian dollar for for the x5 um so yeah that's that's one of the reasons like you know again we paid nowhere close to hundred thousand for this car it was around 72 and change uh for this um other than that um let's talk about driving this car in general right um driving again like this was meant to be a vehicle for my parents to get around <laughs> they didn't need, need it to be super sporty or anything like that but i think that's where this car really falls short of like any like um luxury sport suv luxury sport suv uh this car um really doesn't offer too much going for going towards sport i know this is a sport uh trim level or small like uh, f sport package but other than like the grill that looks a bit sportier than the regular grill and the wheels that look a bit sportier than the regular, it doesn't really offer much. 
And the seats are pretty nice. The seats are pretty comfortable. Uh, they are, they do hold you in, I guess. Um, it's not obviously a uh, race car seat uh, level, but like, yeah, they're pretty supportive. And um, other than that, the, the, this car is, uh, I mean, the only place I, I this, this is the place where I think this car really for, falls short is the transmission. It's not exactly the transmission, it's how the transmission is tuned. So, I mean, um, this car has four, I mean, drive modes. So you have Eco, you have Normal, you have Sport, and then you have Sport Plus. Um, doesn't matter if you're in, if you're in uh, well, obviously if you're in Eco, like the transmission's trying to get to the highest uh, gear possible. So it can be as, as it can run as frugally as, as possible. So it's gonna try to take the highest um, highest um, transmission gear while, while you're accelerating. What happens then is like, you know, you lose all your momentum. Like you're, you're gaining speed, but you're gaining speed at a very slow, slow uh, rate, right? So your acceleration is like, you know, it's, um, I don't want to say non-existent, but it's, it's pretty poor. But I mean, if you're driving in normal, it does give you a bit more like it doesn't feel as sluggish but even in sport and sport plus the car does feel pretty sluggish like it like once you're like the issue i i i, I personally thought was um it's just like again like when, when you're getting off from a, a stop this car is trying to put you in the highest gear possible to be as fuel uh fuel efficient as possible right and um the only difference from normal and sport and sport plus is like you know when you're in a higher gear and you're idling like not idling when you're like cruising at a like a set speed it kind of holds um higher gear for you which doesn't help with the fact like you know this car feels sluggish from a stop right so again like i'm just going right now and, and by the time it reaches 40 it's already in its fourth gear i mean sorry seventh gear right this is an eight speed um uh, eight speed automatic transmission and uh, the engine in this car is the 3.5 Toyota V6. And Toyota has been using this engine for the longest time, right? Uh, and that's one of the reasons we kind of also lent, uh, we're leaning towards the F Sport, because like, uh, sorry, the Lexus RX350, is because this car has been, this car has been, like, the, the engine in this car has been there in, for so long. Most of the kinks and issues have been figured out for this vehicle. So, yeah, I mean, now uh, my brother has a 2008 RX350, and that car has been driving. That that car has been going pretty flawlessly as well. And um, yeah, this car only has 10,000 kilometers, so we haven't driven it like a whole lot. Again, this I'm filming this in 2022 October. So in two years, we just kind of put on like a, around 11,000 kilometer. So again, not a whole lot. Um, obviously there are some family issues that we had to uh, go through but other than that like you know uh, this car doesn't have much kilometer on it um, so what made me go for the uh, 2020 model and pay a premium compared to uh, uh, paying a way cheaper price and going with the 2019 model so the main difference is this infotainment the Lexus infotainment is, uh, the older Lexus infotainment was very, very old school. It was very, like, it was laggy. It was very, like, the screen in general was very small. And the, the truck touch controller was very, like, iffy. Um, so so uh, let's talk, I mean, we're talking about the infotainment. So compared to the 2019 model, like I said, like, the screen was much smaller on those and the resolution like the map resolution was really bad like it was like uh, it needed an update and that's what we got with this current like the 2020 model it was like an updated uh trim level and stuff like that like the whole interior looked just a tiny bit again like compared to 2019 model the 2020 model had a uh, uh, refresh so that obviously helped with uh with the whole um infotainment stuff and stuff uh, infotainment in, in general so the 2020 model got the newer infotainment, the newer trackpad. Even though this is not as good as some of the other um, other trackpads in, uh, like you know, in this industry or in this controller in in general, uh, this is better than how it was before, right? So this one had the, the, the 2020 model had the 
12.3 uh, inch display, which is this over here. If you, if, you, if you go for the base model RX, you're gonna get the old screen as well. So I mean, if you really like, if you're someone who liked the older screen, you can go with the 20, like a 2020 base model and you, you, still, you will still find the older screen design. So one more thing this had on uh, over, the, over the 2019 model was this car ha comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which the 2019 model didn't have. Uh, for anyone who used the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they know how beneficial it is when it actually comes to using the map features like and the music features, right? That being said, um, I'm sure all the other bells and whistles like like the 360 camera uh, was pretty like you know it's some, like I said like when I work at Nissan, they had um, they had the 360 camera on their top of the line Muranos, uh, the Rogues, and the Pathfinders. I'm not sure if they had the path for the Pathfinder, but they had it for the Murano and the Rogues. So um, when I was driving those from from the dealership, like you know, I kind of got really used to the front cameras. So and it really helped with parking in general. Like you know, pulling into like a tight spot, you want to make sure you're you're parked all the way nose in, and like if, if you're parking uh, backing in, like that's a different story. But I just really like the 360 camera feature. This is the only car that has the 360 camera in my in my all the cars that I have, but no, I mean I kind of really like how it's how it like the resolution and stuff like that. It, it doesn't look grainy and stuff. It's it's pretty good in in terms of regular uh, resolution. Um, yeah. Other than that, like you know, uh, so let's talk about some safety features. Safety feature for this car. Uh, okay, let's talk about the convenience features first, and then we talk about safety features. So convenience feature wise, we have obviously your uh, front camera. Like obviously if I'm like pulling up, I'm getting too close to the car in front of me, I can see it on my cameras. Um, like obviously you can see it in front of you as well. But I mean, again, like if you're parking, this, this area really helps. You got the analog clock, you got the ventilated and uh, heated seats for the front passengers and you got the heated seats uh, for the rear passengers. Other than that, you got the heated steering wheel. You also have the uh, the automatic headlight, the high beams. So if the car doesn't sense anyone in front of you or sense any vehicle in front of you, it's gonna pop up the turn on the high beams. And when it does sense someone like uh, in front of you, it's gonna automatically uh, turn it down and go back to your lower um, low beams, right? Uh, other than that, like that's it for the convenience fee features, like. Um, Let's talk about the safety features. So again, this being the top of the line uh, Lexus, you will, you'll get obviously all the bells and whistles in terms of Toyota safety uh, safety systems. So this has your blind spot, this has your forward collision mitigation, this has your rear uh, cross traffic alert, this has the uh, lane departure. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, uh, but these are what really helps like you like be a safe driver like make sure you're a safe driver like you know if the if the um if you're going out of your lane it's gonna pull you back it, ha it has all those features and stuff like that one thing i want to mention is this is a really good highway cruiser like you could travel long distances without getting really uh without getting fatigued and um the reason is because this has the adaptive cruise control and also has the lane keep assist. So the lane keep assist works in conjunction with the with the with the adaptive cruise control to make sure you're in the middle of your lane. If it senses that you're going out of your lane, it's gonna pull you back. Um, so yeah, it's it's a pretty cool feature. Like you know, if you're getting tired and stuff like that, just as a safety net, you have that you have that feature like to help you out with, right? Um, other than that, like, you know, the rear cross traffic alert is pretty, like, if you're backing out of a parking spot and if there's any cars coming uh, from either side behind you, like, you're going to get, uh, this car's going to alert you for, uh, pretty, pretty quick. Uh, and it's also going to pre-tension the uh, brakes for you so you know the brakes are being applied and whatnot, right? That also has the uh, forward collision mitigation. So if it senses the car is getting too close to any object, it's automatically gonna uh, 
um, use the apply the brakes for you. So other than that, that's those are pretty much the safety features. That's why, in general, like as a family vehicle, I really I really like this. Is because it's not yes, it, it's very sluggish from a go. Um, it's very annoying that it's so sluggish because the the engine is really powerful. Like you know, if I'm using the paddle shifter, if I'm manually shifting from one, from one to one to five or one to eight, whatever, it it goes. It it's, it has all the power that you need. It's just that the way the transmission is tuned is just it just leaves a sour taste in my mouth. I'm, I'm not really a, I'm really not a fan of how this transmission is tuned, right? But regardless, um, you gotta give some to get some, right? So, no, other than that, I'm really happy with how this car drives in general, um, cruising wise. Again, this is supposed to be a brand. This is a brand new car. It drives like a brand new car. Uh, it still smells like a brand new car. And uh, we haven't ha like we haven't had any issues. My my one of my friends just got a Genesis, a 2022 Genesis. He had the car for I'm gonna say nine ish months, and he's already run run into like his AC issue. Like his uh one of part of one side of his AC wasn't uh, working, and to get it back into the dealership and uh, get an appointment for warranty work and stuff like that was a was a hassle for him. So. He had to wait for it. Uh, we had to wait to get it fixed for a, for a while, which kind of sucked. Like, you know, you, you have a brand new car and you expect it to kind of run flawlessly, right? <laughs> but again, you do run into issues. That's why the, the warranty safety blanket is there. Warranty obviously fixed it, but the fact that it kind of broke in the first place for him, it was it was kind of kind of sucked. But um, other, than this, other than that, this car is, like I said, it's pretty comfortable. Uh, it's pretty comfortable to drive. The suspension isn't. I'm not gonna say this is um, S-Class suspension. Obviously, if, if you guys see my video, like you, you can see like the S-Class is superior in terms of seat comfort and like the right comfort in general. Like it, that car feels like you're gliding over the surface instead of like driving on it, right? This this feels pretty. This is pretty comfortable compared to my other cars. Uh, yeah, I mean, this would pass for like a semi, uh, semi luxury. Again, I haven't driven a Mercedes for an extensive amount of time. I haven't driven a BMW for an extensive amount of time. Uh, but whenever I drove it, it kind of felt a bit more composed compared to this car. So yeah, um, in general, I have no complaints. I, I like again, like you know, I'm glad like this car has been as reliable as it has it has it been. Okay, so I want to talk about the trim levels uh, of this of the Lexus RX 350. So the major trim levels uh, go like this. So you have the Lexus uh, regular RX 350, which is this one. You have your Lex RX 350 long wheelbase that comes with a third third row seating, and I think you can see six people or seven people. I'm not sure how the seating configura configuration goes. Uh, you have also you have the uh, RX 450 hybrid. The hybrid uh, has obviously has a hybrid motor along with the naturally aspirated motor uh, to give it a bit more power and a, and a bit more a bit better fuel economy. Right? Again, for us, we have we don't really drive this car as often, and fuel economy. Let me just go over like what are we average right now. So since we last, uh, since the last reset, this car has been averaging 12.5 liters per 100 kilometer, 100 kilometers, which I'm not sure if it's great or bad. It's just decent, I guess. And again, like you know, um, I have other cars which are way worse on gas. So that's why, like, if I'm driving long distances, if I'm going to my friends in a different, uh, let's say, city. I always take this is because it's the best on gas. I can give you the best, best gas mileage out of all my cars that I have at home. And uh, it also takes regular gas, which is pretty surprising because, uh, um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know about other vehicles in general, like, um, but I know the Lexus, are the, the hybrid model takes premium gas exclusively. So that needs premium gas. Uh, but for this, uh, 
and I, I know most uh, some Lexuses, like I know the ES takes uh, regular gas. I know this takes regular gas. I think everything else takes premium gas. The IS, GS, uh, GX, LS, LS, uh, LX, all those takes premium gas. But um, yeah, this takes regular gas, so which is which was a surprise to me, which was also one of the selling features uh, when when we came to buy this car, right? Uh, obviously, no one wants to pay premium gas if they could get away with the regular, right? It's just what it is. It, is, it is just how it is. I mean, well, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, if you're cruising on the highway, it's it's fine. If you're driving down, it's fine. Uh, it makes for a pretty good family car, like I said before. Again, from my point of view, it makes a good family car. Someone, someone else might have different requirements for their family. They might need the extra seats. They might need a bigger engine to haul or tow or anything like that. Again, we don't tow, we don't haul anything. So we don't really have to worry about that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right, folks, let's go in the back seat. Let's take a look and see what how it goes. So right off the bat, before I get in, I'm gonna show you guys the the backrest control uh, switch for the backrest so you can obviously position the backrest how you want it when the car is turned off the seat slides back all the way to make sure getting out of the the seat is easy um, and whatnot right so even then like with the seat slide by like all the way back you can see i have i have some like you know a couple of fingers and there's like a cutout over here like Again, it's 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 not uncomfortable. It's not claustrophobic, whatnot. And the main attraction is, is obviously the panoramic roof. So yeah, uh, it gives it a very open feeling inside the cabin. It's not claustrophobic. Um, so yeah, it's, it has pretty big windows, pretty big, um, a lot of area for sunlight to come into the cabin. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a quick look outside the vehicle. Again, uh, when you're buying a family vehicle, it doesn't really matter how the outside look, it just has to fit your requirements, right? But in general, um, the the F-Sport package comes with the 20 inch F-Sport um, gray rims, gray color, gun metallic or whatnot. You have the triple beam LED lights. You got the spindle Lexus grill. So I also wanted to talk about the design of the vehicle. It, it, it's not a super groundbreaking design. It's not like, you know, it's not a design that's gonna take the world by surprise. It's a very um, unassuming and um, unoffensive design. So like when people see it, they might fancy it. Some people might, some people might not, right? So yeah, that's, um, that's mostly about it. Again, this car looks all right from my point of view. It's not. It's not like you know, like I said, it's not breaking. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a groundbreaking design or any any means. But no, it does the job. It looks pretty cool, and um, yeah, it does the job for our family. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you if you think I miss anything about these uh, about the RX, um, let me know. Again, this wasn't supposed to be like an information session. It's just supposed to be my opinion on this vehicle in general. So yeah, hope you guys like it and um, I'll be back with more videos.